In case you failed to read the title properly, this is a story of how I failed to master Minecraft speedrunning in one week. Originally, I had this great video idea where I would take a week and each day I would do something related to speedrunning. The structure would have been something like this. Two days of speedrunning without any training, three days of practicing and researching various speedrunning techniques, and then two days of speedrunning so I could compare to whatever was my best time from the first two days. It would have been a great way to see which techniques and tips helped me out the most, which I could then tell you guys about. But what actually happened was I learned how challenging and persistent you have to be to speedrun Minecraft. But don't fear, it wasn't a complete disaster, because I'm still pretty proud of the time I ended up getting. So grab a seat by the fire and let me take you to the stars as I tell you this story. It all started with me needing to get a baseline time, a time that I can compare to at the end of the week to see how much I improved. For this week of speedrunning, I wanted to do the classic 1.16.1 speedrun route. I would say this route is pretty easy and you only have to do these things. Reset your world until you spawn with a village close to spawn, loot for hay bales which then uses food, kill the iron golem to craft buckets and a flint and steel, then find an exposed lava pool, construct the nether portal, enter the portal, find a fortress, mine gold from scraps of gold, found around the nether, trade it with piglins for ender pearls, come out of the nether, find the stronghold using triangulation, find the end portal room, and finally, last of all, kill the dragon. Um, <laughs> so that shouldn't be that hard, right? And I just kind of got into it. And that's where I learned my first lesson about speedrunning. It's all good and all to know what you want to do, but to actually do it, you need the stars to align. The first part in getting a seed with a village close by isn't actually that bad. Resetting your seed really early into an attempt is pretty quick, so getting through those initial parts of the strat aren't really that hard. But where it gets difficult is once you enter the nether. The worst part in every attempt is getting into the nether and running around like a headless chicken for 10 minutes and not finding a fortress. But let's say you get lucky and you actually get a fortress. The reality is at this point you've only really started to speedrun, because now you have to get the galaxies to align to get enough pearls from bartering. But I gotta run eventually, after like 170 attempts I think. Yes! Oh nice. My bug. Oh my, wait no no no, you have to go through the portal. Oh my god! So the estimated two days of speedrunning turned into more like five. But at this point, I was invested to the point where I really wasn't doing it for the video and more like wanting to prove to myself that I could beat Minecraft in under 30 minutes, which was my goal from the beginning. And there was a lot of room for improvement. I noticed three things that I needed to improve based on my initial speedruns. The first one, I was spending a lot of time in strongholds finding the end portal. So my solution was to code up a plugin which found all the strongholds in the world and when I ran a command it would teleport me to a random one where I could then practice some strats. I won't go over them in this video, but if you're interested, I'll link a video below where I got some of the ideas. Second one, I was killing the dragon slowly by destroying all the crystals with a bow and arrow and then smacking the dragon to death. This was extremely slow and I really needed to learn one cycling, which is using beds which explode in the end and deal massive damage to quickly kill the dragon while it perches. And you don't even need to destroy any crystals. To practice this, I used a practice map where I could just do one cycles over and over again until I felt comfortable doing them in proper speedruns. Last but not least, I was dying during the blaze phase of a speedrun really often. And this was just super frustrating because getting fortresses was super rare and dying at this stage is just me being bad at fighting blazes and nothing else. The way I practiced this was by finding a blaze spawner in a fresh world and then just giving myself the tools I would usually have, going into survival mode and trying to get like 6 or 7 blaze rods and just repeating this. Pretty simple, but I learned how to deal with blazes. In addition to all this practice, I watched a ton of speedrun related content. One channel I would recommend is by a speedrunner named K4, who has a metric ton of value in his videos. I spent around two days doing practice and research, so I had already failed my initial goal of mastering speedrunning in one week. But honestly, at this point, all I wanted was, was that sub 30 minute time. So the next day, I started speedrunning again. The first day, I did speedrunning for eight hours. And I didn't get any super good runs, but I was like, you know, it's mostly a matter of time, right? Well, the next day I did four hours and nothing. And the next day I did four hours again and nothing. I started getting kind of discouraged at this point because I had almost doubled the number of attempts I had done for my first speed run and I didn't really have much to show for it. I think I was just unlucky. Then the next day I had a run going and honestly, 
I'm too embarrassed to show the footage because I forget to turn on hitboxes and while the dragon begins its perch, I fumble, waste all my beds and die. That could have been a sub 27 minute time. But I continue. I continue for the next three days, averaging around four hours of speedrunning a day. I get a few runs, but they're all above 30 minutes. I started speedrunning on Monday and it was Saturday and I was going crazy. All I was thinking was it shouldn't be this hard to get a sub 30 minute run and I had hit over 800 attempts at this point. If I had finished that sub 27 minute time properly, I would have been done like three days ago. But I continued speedrunning on Saturday and then this run happened. Oh, there we go. This is a good sign. There we go. Step brother, I'm stuck. I need beds. Where are we going in? 4.30, that's not bad. Oh my god, so scuffed. We got a fort- we got a nether in the fortress. So far, this one was pretty standard, not the fastest start, but we had just seen a fortress, so I begin making my way over there. He's moving. Oh, it's right here. It's a covered one as well. No, no crits. How many do I have? I have enough. I have enough. Oh god. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. This is really good pace. God. Oh god. At this point, I had done bartering for around 2-3 to three minutes now, and normally this is where my runs end. My goal split is to leave the nether with enderpearls and blaze rods at around 20 minutes. Then this happens, and I go into full focus mode. One problem though, I only had two beds and I needed a minimum of six based on my one cycling practice. So I either had to find sheep or get super lucky with a village on the way to the stronghold. Then in the corner of my eye, I see this village pretty much on the same angle as where the eye of Ender flew. Five, six, seven. You can see me doing triangulating now, trying to find where the stronghold was. Pretty much, you throw the Eye of Ender at two places, not on the same line, and you go to the point where both Eye of Enders would have met. I run around the stronghold for ages, and I am freaking out. If I don't find this end portal, I'm not sure I could keep speedrunning after this run. If you were paying attention when I entered the stronghold, you probably would recognize that netherrack. Yep, if I turned left, I would have saved around 6 minutes of running around trying to find the end portal.
I did it! Sub 30, baby! Sub 30!